Currently, in 2008, in the EU, there were 85 million EU citizens at the risk of poverty. Is the EU fulfilling its own um, uh, aims, its own goals, the aspirations of the citizens? In the current situation, I cannot see. The policies, the way they are implemented, as being directed towards those who need our help most. What do you mean by social Europe? And this is more a kind of project for a generation or two generations. So what we need is to develop a vision, what we, what we think uh, social Europe should consist of. And I think we should discuss about things like inclusion, including people, about human rights, about protection. People need protection, so they need a strong uh, state or public community who is supporting them when they are in need. But Europe cannot uh, uh, enclose itself in a fortress and uh, we don't care about the rest of the world. About how can we act? I think first of all what would be important is that all of us just simply live by the principles that we believe in uh, and that we also talk about them, that we join the debate, that we join all the organizations in whose uh, actions we also believe and I think that this is something very very important that we all are active in civil society that we come, become the members of the youth organization of the trade unions, of the students unions of the parties of anything where we can actually join this and make sure that we join in this debate Hello Oh hello I don't know if you've noticed it but there is a great gap between us! The initial rejection of the first European constitution and then the Lisbon Treaty shows us that EU citizens do not have a very positive opinion of the European Union. Today, many EU citizens have a very limited knowledge of what the Union, European Union does, which can lead to an indifference towards Europe. This could read, Today, our citizens do not have a very positive opinion of local government. Many of our citizens have a limited knowledge of what our state institutions do, leading to indifference towards the true meaning of democracy. Uh, so uh, I think that the gap does exist. Um, we, we should uh, give, uh, create conditions for citizens to take part in the European debate. How? Uh, by giving them knowledge arms to uh, make choice by um, by uh, giving them uh, a space to be he to be heard, but for that we need from institution two things: a, po a political, legislative support, support, and a financial support. I'd like, to, I'd like to mention two points. First one is, I think we have this gap, but we have institutions to reduce this gap such as the European Works Council, as I mentioned before, which are clearly geared towards uh, participation. And I suggest that we should communicate these options, these opportunities, as well as the possibilities provided by the Lisbon Treaty. And if we achieve this, overall legitimacy of the European Union uh, will increase in a medium or long term perspective. But the thing that's going to free this up is going to be social media. It is going to be your locality is no longer having to go knock on every single doorstep, shake every hand, kiss every baby. It's going to be on Facebook, talking to people, chatting to people, sending them messages. That's going to be the new way of interacting and this is going to allow European politicians, I think, to, um, to bring local politics to Europe. Uh, and, and that is the only way the, the gap is going to close and, uh, and that, that, that is what's going to happen. So maybe make uh, the European Union cool so that they get more interested because it's getting closer, closer to, the, uh, to them so that they can then move closer to the European Union. I think that the European Union um, certainly has a future in the sense that it has been a very, very successful project. It's a project that um, other regions of the world wish to imitate. There have been steps taken in other parts of the world towards more regional integration. Uh, Mercosur in uh, South America is a particu particularly good example. Asian is also 
another. The new realities of the 21st century, if we start living in a less Europe-centered world, if we therefore realize the true dimensions of the European project in a world that changes very rapidly, then I certainly think we have a future and I think that a lot of positive steps have been taken. We, we sometimes tend to focus on the more gloomy side and certainly I do so because I want to see more improvements being made. Which future should Europe have? And uh, it depends because on the one hand, it, as I observe it, now it goes in the direction of therapy programs, uh, to even uh, make the gap between poor and rich bigger and on the other hand to to get the way around to make the future better you have to, re to have a big common policy enhance regulation of financial market as I said uh, enhance standards and so on and yes I think uh, to have a better future, the only chance is uh, in the European Union, but I'm not sure if the European Union now uh, moves in the right direction. I think the future of the European Union hinges on two main points. Uh, the first is whether whether the citizens of the EU will ad ad identify themselves with the, with the Union. So I think we need these points of identification I already spoke of. And I like the idea you mentioned it and someone posted it of a European citizenship because I think this could be some such a point of identification. I think I also like the idea, I don't know who mentioned it, of, the, of a European president because this also I think it could be uh, such a symbol or a uh, point of identification. And I think enlargement has been a great policy for the European Union. I think it has been the most successful policy ever followed. And ever since enlargement began in the 1970s, the European community at the time, now the EU, has become richer has become more diverse, has become more dynamic. Um, don't leave us now. Come and join and let's make uh, this whole debate that we launched here a great success for the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>